This video gives a brief overview of key question one, how effectively did the Tudors restore and develop the powers of the monarchy in relation to Elizabeth I. Elizabeth was an unlikely ruler. Firstly, she was a woman. Secondly, her family background counted against her. When she was just two and a half, her father, Henry VIII, cut off her mother's head and made Elizabeth herself illegitimate. During the reign of her sister, Mary I, Elizabeth was placed under house arrest. She was also a Protestant in charge of a country that was largely Catholic. It wasn't the best of starts. Elizabeth, however, was a survivor. She was determined to take and keep control. Early on in her reign, the Spanish ambassador said that Elizabeth gave orders as absolutely as her father did and claimed that she was more feared even than Mary. Elizabeth was not as involved in the day-to-day -day running of government as some other monarchs, such as Henry VII. However, she was informed about and interested in political issues. She was determined to keep her prerogative powers. These are the powers that only the monarch has, such as the right to call and dissolve Parliament, the right to declare war and make peace, the right to appoint and dismiss ministers, and the right to name a successor. Elizabeth in insisted on taking these most important decisions herself. In fact, she banned all discussion of the succession from Parliament, declaring that it was her business alone. She didn't mind delegating, but only to her most loyal and trusted advisers. She also knew how to make her council and her court loyal to her. She did this in part by giving leading courtiers positions on the council and leading councillors positions at court. She also employed the wives and daughters of her councillors as ladies of her household. In this way, she essentially involved herself in all aspects of the lives of those closest to her. They owed everything to her and were therefore more likely to stay loyal. Finally, Elizabeth was a master of public relations. She staged a huge procession for her entrance into London after her accession to the throne. She was carried into London and transported through the city, surrounded by hundreds of servants and stopping regularly to watch plays, hear poems and make sure that the citizens saw her and loved her. Crowns lined the streets to catch a glimpse of the Queen and listened awestruck to her she promised to be their faithful and loving Queen. During her reign, she commissioned many portraits of herself. She looked young and fresh in all of them. This picture, for example, was painted when Elizabeth was well into her, her, into her 60s. The portraits also contain messages, some subtle and some not. In this portrait, the inscription says, no rainbow without the sun. The rainbow symbolizes peace and Elizabeth, dressed in gold, is clearly the sun. This suggests that peace is not possible without Elizabeth. Notice the decorations on her dress? It's covered with eyes and ears, showing that she's all-knowing and all-powerful, almost godlike. To find out more, read The Children of England by Alison Weir, the section on Elizabeth. You could research further portraits of Elizabeth. Try googling the Armada portrait, the Ditchley portrait or the Pelican portrait. There's plenty of information about the symbolism of these portraits online. Alternatively, watch David Starkey on Elizabeth I. Links are on the blog.